from death to life, the Church calls upon her sons and daughters scattered throughout the world to come together to watch and pray. If we keep the memorial of the Lord's Paschal Solemnity in this way, His Word and celebrating His mysteries, then we shall have the sure hope of sharing His triumph over death and living with Him in God. Let us pray. O God, who through your Son bestowed upon the faithful the fire of your glory, sanctify this new fire, we pray. And grant that by these Paschal celebrations we may be so inflamed with heavenly desires that with minds made pure, we may attain festivities of unending splendor through Christ our Lord. Amen. Christ, yesterday and today, the beginning and the end, the Alpha and the Omega, times belong to him and all the ages. To him be glory and power through every age and forever. Amen. by his holy and glorious wounds may Christ the Lord Guard us and protect us. May the light of Christ, rising in glory, dispel the darkness of our hearts and minds.
the light of Christ. The light of Christ. The light of Christ.
Exalt, let them exalt the hosts of heaven. Exalt, let angel ministers of God exalt. Let the trumpet of salvation sound aloud our mighty King's triumph. Be glad, let earth be glad as glory floods her. Ablaze with light from her eternal King. Let all corners of the earth be glad, knowing an end to gloom and darkness. Rejoice, let Mother Church also rejoice, arrayed with the lightning of his glory. Let this holy building shake with joy, filled with the mighty voices of the peoples. It is truly right and just, with ardent love of mind and heart, and with devoted service of our voice, to acclaim our God invisible, the Almighty Father, and Jesus Christ, our Lord, his Son, his only begotten, who for our sake paid Adam's debt to the Eternal Father, and pouring out his own dear blood, wiped clean the record of our ancient sinfulness. These then are the feasts of Passover, in which is slain the Lamb, the one true Lamb, whose blood anoints the doorposts of believers. This is the night when once you led our forebears, Israel's children, from slavery in Egypt, and made them pass dry shod through the Red Sea. This is the night that with a pillar of fire banished the darkness of sin. This is the night that even now throughout the world sets Christian believers apart from worldly vices and from the gloom of sin, leading them to grace and joining them to his holy ones. This is the night when Christ broke the prison bars of death and rose victorious from the underworld. Our birth would have been no gain had we not been redeemed. O oh, wonder of your humble care for us, O oh, love, O oh, charity beyond all telling, to ransom a slave you gave away your son. O oh, truly necessary sin of Adam, destroyed completely by the death of Christ. O oh, happy fault that turns so great, so glorious a Redeemer. O oh, truly blessed night, Worthy alone to know the time and hour 
when Christ rose from the underworld. This is the night of which it is written, the night shall be as bright as day. Dazzling is the night for me, and full of gladness. The sanctifying power of this night dispels wickedness, washes faults away, restores innocence to the fallen and joy to mourners. Drives out hatred, fosters concord, and brings down the mighty. On this your night of grace, O Holy Father, accept this candle, a solemn offering, the work of bees and of your servants' hands, an evening sacrifice of praise, this gift from your most holy church. But now we know the praises of this pillar, which glowing fire ignites for God's honor. A fire into many flames divided, yet never dimmed by sharing of its light. For it is fed by melting wax, drawn out by mother bees, to build a torch so precious. O oh, truly blessed night, when things of heaven are wed to those of earth and divine to the human. Therefore, O Lord, we pray you that this candle, hallowed to the honor of your name, may persevere undimmed to overcome the darkness of this night. Receive it as a pleasing fragrance, and let it mingle with the lights of heaven. May this flame be found still burning by the morning star, the one morning star who never sets, Christ, your Son, who coming back from death's domain has shed his peaceful light on humanity and lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. Please extinguish your candles and be seated. <coughs> My dear sisters and brothers, now that we have begun our solemn vigil, let us listen with quiet hearts to the Word of God. Let us meditate on how God in times past saved His people, and in these the last days has sent us His Son as our Redeemer. Let us pray that our God may complete this paschal work of salvation by the fullness of redemption. from the book of Genesis. In the beginning, when God created the heavens and the earth, 
the earth was a formless wasteland and darkness covered the abyss while a mighty wind swept over the waters. Then God said, let there be light, and there was light. God saw how good the light was. God then separated the light from darkness. God called the light day, and the darkness he called night. Thus, evening came, and morning followed the first day. Then God said, let there be a dome in the middle of the waters to separate one body of water from another. And so it happened. God made the dome and it separated the water above the dome from the water below it. God called the dome the sky. Evening came and morning followed the second day. Then God said, let the water under the sky be gathered into a single basin so that the dry land may appear. And so it happened. The water under the sky was gathered into its basin and the dry land appeared. God called the dry land the earth, and the basin of the water he called the sea. God saw how good it was. Then God said, let the earth bring forth vegetation, every kind of plant that bears seed, and every kind of fruit tree on earth that bears fruit with its seed in it. And so it happened. The earth brought forth every kind of plant that bears seed and every kind of fruit tree on earth that bears fruit with its seed in it. God saw how good it was. Evening came and morning followed the third day. Then God said, Let there be lights in the dome of the sky to separate day from night. Let them mark the fixed times, the days and the years, and serve as luminaries in the dome of the sky to shed light upon the earth. And so it happened. God made the two great lights the greater one to govern the day and the lesser one to govern the night. And he made the stars. God set them in the dome of the sky to shed light upon the earth, to govern the day and the night, and to separate the light from the darkness. God saw how good it was. Evening came and morning followed the fourth day. Then God said, let the water teem with an abundance of living creatures. And on the earth, let birds fly beneath the dome of the sky. And so it happened. God created the great sea monsters and all kinds of swimming creatures with which the water teems and all kinds of winged birds. God saw how good it was, and God blessed them, saying, Be fertile, multiply, and fill the water of the seas, and let the birds multiply on earth. Evening came, and morning followed the fifth day. Then God said, Let the earth bring forth all kinds of living creatures, cattle, creeping things, and wild animals of all kinds. And so it happened. God made all kinds of wild animals, all kinds of cattle, 
and all kinds of creeping things on the earth. God saw how good it was. Then God said, let us make man in our image after our likeness. Let them have dominion over the fish of the sea, the birds of the air and the cattle, and over all the wild animals, and all the creatures that crawl on the ground. God created man in his image. In the image of God, he created him. Male and female, he created them. God blessed them saying, be fertile and multiply, fill the earth and subdue it. Have dominion over the fish of the sea, the birds of the air, and all the living things that move on the earth. God also said, See, I give you every sea-bearing plant all over the earth and every tree that has sea-bearing fruit on it to be your food. And to all the animals of the land, all the birds of the air, and all the living creatures that crawl on the ground, I give all the green plants for food. And so it happened. God looked at everything he had made, and he found it very good. Evening came, and morning followed, the sixth day. Thus the heavens and the earth and all their array were completed. Since on the seventh day God was finished with the work he had been doing, he rested on the seventh day from all the work he had undertaken the word of the Lord. is full of the goodness of the Lord. The earth is full of the goodness of the Lord. The word of the Lord is faithful and all his works to be trusted. The Lord loves justice and right, and his merciful love fills the earth. The earth is full of the goodness of the Lord. By the word of the Lord the heavens were made, by the breath of his mouth all their host. As in a flask he collects the waves of the ocean, he stores up the depths of the sea. The earth is full of the goodness of the Lord. Blessed the nation whose God is the Lord, the people he has chosen as his heritage. From the heavens the Lord looks forth. He sees all the children of men. 
The earth is full of the goodness of the Lord. Our soul is waiting for the Lord. He is our help and our shield. May your merciful love be upon us as we hope in you, O Lord. The earth is full of the goodness of the Lord. Let us pray. O God, who wonderfully created human nature and still more wonderfully redeemed it, grant, we pray, to set our minds against the enticements of sin that we may merit to attain eternal joys. Through Christ our Lord. A reading from the book of Genesis. God put Abraham to the test. He called to him, Abraham. Here I am, he replied. Then God said, take your son Isaac, your only one whom you love, and go to the land of Moriah. There you shall offer him up as a holocaust on a height that I will point out to you. Early the next morning, Abraham saddled his donkey, took with him his son Isaac and two of his servants as well, and with the wood that he had cut for the Holocaust, set out for the place of which God had told him. On the third day, Abraham got sight of the place from afar. Then he said to his servants, both of you stay here with the donkey while the boy and I go on over yonder. We will worship and then come back to you. Thereupon Abraham took the wood for the Holocaust and laid it on his son Isaac's shoulders, while he himself carried the fire and the knife. As the two walked on together, Isaac spoke to his father Abraham. Father, Isaac said. Yes, son, he replied. Isaac continued. Here are the fire and the wood, but where is the sheep for the Holocaust? Son, Abraham answered, God himself will provide the sheep for the Holocaust. Then the two continued going forward. When they came to the place of which God had told him, Abraham built an altar there and arranged the wood on it. Next, he tied up his son Isaac and put him on top of the wood of the altar. Then he reached out and took the knife to slaughter his son. But the Lord's messenger called to him from heaven, Abraham, Abraham. Here I am, he answered. Do not lay your hand on the boy, said the messenger. Do not do the least thing to him. I know now how devoted you are to God since you did not withhold from me your own beloved son. As Abraham looked about, he spied a ram caught by its horns in the thicket. So he went and took the ram and offered it up as a holocaust in place of his son. Abraham named the, named the site Yahweh Yireh. Hence people now say, on the mountain the Lord will see. Again, the Lord's messenger called to Abraham from heaven and said, I swear by myself, declares the Lord, that because you acted as you did in not withholding from me your beloved son, 
I will bless you abundantly and make your descendants as countless as the stars of the sky and the sands of the seashore. Your descendants shall take possession of the gates of their enemies. And in your descendants, all the nations of the earth shall find blessing. All this because you obeyed my command. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Let us pray. O God, Supreme Father of the faithful, who increase the children of your promise by pouring out the grace of adoption throughout the whole world, and who through this Paschal mystery make your servant Abraham the father of nations as once you swore, grant we pray that your peoples may enter worthily into the grace to which you call all them, through Christ our Lord. A reading from the book of Exodus. The Lord said to Moses, why are you crying out to me? Tell the Israelites to go forward. And you, lift up your staff and with hand outstretched over the sea, split the sea in two, 
that the Israelites may pass through it on dry land. But I will make the Egyptians so obstinate that they will go in after them. Then I will receive glory through Pharaoh and all his army, his chariots and charioteers. The Egyptians shall know that I am the Lord when I receive glory through Pharaoh and his chariots and charioteers. The angel of God, who had been leading Israel's camp, now moved and went around behind them. The column of cloud also, leaving the front, took up its place behind them, so that it came between the camp of the Egyptians and that of Israel. But the cloud now became dark, and thus the night passed without the rival camps coming any closer together all night long. Then Moses stretched out his hand over the sea, and the Lord swept the sea with a strong east wind throughout the night, and so turned it into dry land. When the water was thus divided, the Israelites marched into the midst of the sea on dry land with the water like a wall to their right and to their left. The Egyptians followed in pursuit. All Pharaoh's horses and chariots and charioteers went after them right into the midst of the sea. In the night watch, just before dawn, the Lord cast through the column of the fiery cloud upon the Egyptian force a glance that threw it into a panic, and he so clogged their chariot wheels that they could hardly drive. With that, the Egyptians sounded the retreat before Israel because the Lord was fighting for them against the Egyptians. Then the Lord told Moses, Stretch out your hand over the sea, that the water may flow back upon the Egyptians, upon their chariots and their charioteers. So Moses stretched out his hand over the sea, and at dawn the sea flowed back to its normal depth. The Egyptians were fleeing head-on toward the sea, when the Lord hurled them into its midst. As the water flowed back, it covered the chariots and the charioteers of Pharaoh's whole army, which had followed the Israelites into the sea. Not a single one of them escaped, but the Israelites had marched on dry land through the midst of the sea with the water like a wall to their right and to their left. Thus the Lord saved Israel on that day from the power of the Egyptians. <clears throat> when Israel saw the Egyptians lying dead on the seashore and beheld the great power that the Lord had shown against the Egyptians, they feared the Lord and believed in him and in his servant Moses. Then Moses and the Israelites sang this song to the Lord. I will sing to the Lord, for he is glorious, tr gloriously triumphant, Horse and chariot he is cast into the sea. The word of the Lord. Let us sing to the Lord. He has covered himself in glory. Let us sing to the Lord. He has covered himself in glory. I will sing to the Lord, for he is gloriously triumphant. Horse and chariot he cast into the sea. My strength and my courage is the Lord, and he has been my Savior. He is my God, I praise him. 
the God of my father, I extol him. Let us sing to the Lord. He has covered himself in glory. The Lord is a warrior. Lord is his name. Chariots, chariots, and army he hurled into the sea. The elite of his officers were submerged in the Red Sea. Let us sing to the Lord. He has covered himself in glory. The flood waters covered them. They sank into the depths like a stone. Your right hand, O Lord, magnificent in power. Your right hand, O Lord, has shattered the enemy. Let us sing to the Lord. He has covered himself in glory. You brought in the people you redeemed and planted them on the mountain of your inheritance, the place where you made your seat, O Lord, the sanctuary, Lord, which your hands established. The Lord shall reign forever and ever. Let us sing to the Lord. He has covered himself in glory. Let us pray. O God, who by the light of the New Testament have unlocked the meaning of wonders worked in former times, so that the Red Sea prefigures the sacred font and the nation delivered from slavery foreshadows the Christian people, grant, we pray, that all nations, obtaining the privilege of Israel by merit of faith, may be reborn by partaking of your spirit. Through Christ our Lord. Lectura del libro del profeta Isaías. Esto dice el Señor. Todos ustedes, los que tienen sed, vengan por agua. Y los que no tienen dinero, vengan, tomen trigo y coman. Tomen vino y leche sin pagar. ¿Por qué gastar el dinero en lo que no es pan y el salario en lo que no alimenta? Escúchame atentos y comerán bien. Saborearán platillos sustanciosos. Préstenme atención. Vengan a mí. Escúchenme y vivirán. Sellaré con ustedes una alianza perpetua. Cumpliré las promesas que hice a David. Como a él lo puse por testigo ante los pueblos, como príncipe y soberano de las naciones, así tú reinarás a un pueblo desconocido. Y las naciones que no te conocían acudirán a ti. Por amor del Señor, tu Dios, por el Santo de Israel que te ha honrado. Busquen al Señor mientras lo puedan encontrar. Invóquenlo mientras está cerca. Que el, que el malvado abandone su camino y el criminal sus planes. Que regrese al Señor y Él tendrá piedad. A nuestro Dios, que es rico en perdón. Palabra del Señor.
Almighty, ever-living God, sole hope of the world, who by the preaching of your prophets unveiled the mysteries of this present age, graciously increase the longing of your people, for only at the prompting of your grace do the faithful progress in any kind of virtue. Through Christ our Lord, A reading from the book of the prophet, Ezekiel. The word of the Lord came to me, saying, Son of man, when the house of Israel lived in their land, they defiled it by their conduct and deeds. Therefore, I poured out my fury upon them because of the blood that they poured out on the ground and because they defiled it 
with idols. I scattered them among the nations, dispersing them over foreign lands. According to their conduct and deeds, I judged them. But when they came among the nations, wherever they came, they served to profane my holy name because it was said of them, these are the people of the Lord, yet they have to leave their land. So I have relented because of my holy name, which the house of Israel profaned among the nations where they came. Therefore say to the house of Israel, thus says the Lord God, not for your sakes do I act, house of Israel, but for the sake of my holy name, which you profaned among the nations to which you came. I will prove the holiness of my great name profaned among the nations, in whose midst you have profaned it. Thus the nations shall know that I am the Lord, said the Lord God, when in their sight I prove my holiness through you. For I will take you away from among the nations, gather you from all the foreign lands, and bring you back to your own land. I will sprinkle clean water upon you to cleanse you from all your impurities and from all your idols I will cleanse you. I will give you a new heart and a new spirit within you, taking from your bodies your stony hearts and giving you natural hearts. I will put my spirit within you and make you live by my statues, careful to observe my decrees. You shall live in the land I gave your fathers. You shall be my people, and I will be your God. The word of the Lord. Like a deer that longs for running streams, my soul longs for you, my God. Like a deer that longs for running streams, my soul longs for you, my God. My soul is thirsting for God, the living God. When can I enter and appear before the face of God? Like a deer that longs for running streams, my soul longs for you, my God. For I would go to the place of your wondrous tent, all the way to the house of God, amid cries of gladness and thanksgiving, the throng keeping joyful festival. Like a deer that longs for running streams, my soul longs for you, my God. Oh, send forth your light and your truth, they will guide me on. 
They will bring me to your holy mountain, to the place where you dwell. Like a deer that longs for running streams, my soul longs for you, my God. And I will come to the altar of God, to God, my joy and gladness. To you I will give thanks on the harp, O God, my God. Like a deer that longs for running streams, my soul longs for you, my God. Stand. Let us pray. O God of unchanging power and eternal light, look with favor on the wondrous mystery of the whole church and serenely accomplish the work of human salvation which you planned from all eternity. May the whole world know and see that what was cast down is raised up, what had become old is made new, and all things are restored to integrity through Christ, just as by him they came into being, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Come 
Sancto Spiritu, in gloria Dei Patris. God, who made this most sacred night, radiant with the glory of the Lord's resurrection, stir up in your church a spirit of adoption, so that renewed in body and mind, we may render you undivided service through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Romans. Brothers and sisters, are you unaware that we who were baptized into Christ Jesus were baptized into his death? We were indeed buried with him through baptism into, into death, so that just as Christ was raised from the dead by the glory of the Father, we too might live in newness of life. For if we have grown into union with him through a death like his, we shall also be united with him in the resurrection. We know that our old self was crucified with him so that our sinful body might be done away with, that we might no longer be in slavery to sin. For a dead person has been absolved from sin. If then we have died with Christ, we believe that we shall also live with him. We know that Christ, raised from the dead, dies no more. Death no longer has power over him. As to his death, he died to sin once and for all. As to his life, he lives for God. Consequently, you too must think of yourselves as being dead to sin and living for God in Christ Jesus. The word of the Lord. Most Reverend Father, I bring you a message of great joy, the message of Alleluia. Alleluia.
thanks to the Lord, for he is good. His love endures forevermore. So let the children of Israel say, God's love forevermore. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Glory to you, After the Sabbath, as the first day of the week was dawning, Mary Magdalene and the other Mary came to see the tomb. And behold, there was a great earthquake, for an angel of the Lord descended from heaven, approached, rolled back the stone, and sat upon it. His appearance was like lightning, and his clothing was white as snow. The guards were shaken with fear of him and became like dead men. Then the angel said to the women in reply, do not be afraid. I know that you are seeking Jesus, the crucified. He is not here, for he has been raised, just as he said. Come and see the place where he lay. Then, go quickly and tell his disciples, he has been raised from the dead, and he is going before you to Galilee. There you will see him. Behold, I have told you. Then they went away quickly from the tomb, fearful 
yet overjoyed. And they ran to announce this to his disciples. And behold, Jesus met them on the way and greeted them. They approached, embraced his feet, and did him homage. Then Jesus said to them, Do not be afraid. Go and tell my brothers to go to Galilee, and there they will see me. The Gospel of the Lord. Well, first of all, it's uh, so good to see so many of you here today, you know, together with Father Chris Stubner, who is rector of the cathedral, and Father Tom Sparacino, who is rector of St. Paul's Seminary, together with the seminary faculty, the seminarians, uh, and in my own name, I, I welcome you all here today. And I, I know that you um, will join with me in, in welcoming a hunter who will be baptized very shortly uh, together with his sponsor, Keith. And we want to welcome in a very special way Hunter's mom, Heather, uh, and uh, F Hunter's siblings. And Hunter, I want to tell you that um, you're an inspiration to me and I think an inspiration to lots of us as a young man choosing to give yourself over to Christ. And I know that your dad is uh, watching from above very proud of you, and I am telling you that I'm offering a, my Mass intention for, for your dad. So um, I thought it would be a good idea to do an interactive exercise. You know, we, we've been listening with great attention to God's Word being proclaimed to us. You know, the two stories that we heard from the book of Genesis and, and the story that we heard from the book of Exodus and, and, and the, the passage from the prophet Isaiah and the prophet Ezekiel. And so I have a little quiz for you, and I w want you to think about each of these questions. First of all, do you know and do you remember the date of your baptism? Do you know? And do you remember the name of the deacon or the priest or maybe the bishop who baptized you? Do you remember the name of the church in which you were baptized? Do you remember the names of your godparents? And what about your baptismal garment? Did your parents buy it for your baptism? Or was it a generational baptismal garment that had been used for a number of years? Today we have listened to the story of Jesus' resurrection from the Gospel of Matthew. And what Jesus instructed Mary Magdalene to do was to go to Galilee. And he asked, them to, asked her to go to Galilee to inform the rest of the apostles because that's where it all began. That's where the relationship between the disciples of Jesus and Jesus began. And over the course of three years of public ministry... Those disciples witnessed Jesus do miraculous things to cure the blind, to, to heal those who weren't able to hear, to help those who weren't able to walk to walk, to be able to, to cleanse lepers. 
For three years, those disciples of Jesus heard him teach and preach about the Father in heaven, encouraging them to take on a brand new life. Through the course of those three years, Jesus' disciples learned what it meant to really pray to God as Father. And what would happen in Galilee as Jesus would in fact appear before them is that he would then send them out on a mission. A mission to make sure that what they saw and what they learned and what they experienced over the course of three years would go worldwide until the end of all time. And over the course of the next 50 days, as you and I come to church, we're going to be hearing the unfolding story about how the body of Christ, the church, really got off the ground. And so I think you can understand now why I gave you that little Easter quiz. Why I asked you about the date of your baptism. And the one who baptized you and the church in which that happened and relative to the baptismal garment that you wore on that day. If you had a chance to visit my, my little chapel in my apartment on our campus uh, in Green Tree, right above the holy water font is my baptismal robe. It was given to me by my mom. It was framed. And under it is the little plate that says, David Allen Zubek, baptized September 18th, 1949. Two weeks to the day after I was born. And I purposely have that baptismal garment there above the holy water font to remind me every time I go into that chapel of what my baptism was all about. And certainly as I look at that, that garment and re recognize that when I was baptized, I was six pounds, three ounces. And a lot has happened over the course of nearly 74 years. And what I see in that baptismal font is how much I have grown and continue to need to grow in the way of Jesus. And so must it be for all of you as well. Just as Jesus experienced his resurrection and wanted to take the good news of his rising from the dead and meet the, his disciples and make them apostles in Galilee, so must you and I go back to the moment of our baptism and be ready to renew ourselves here tonight. In a very few short moments, we will all be witnesses to Hunter being baptized. We will all be witnesses with him as he makes his baptismal promises. We will all experience the living water of Christ being poured over him as he becomes a member of our family. And followed from that moment you and I will have the chance to once again renew the promises made for us on the day, in the place, and by the person who baptized us by doing it here, followed by our being sprinkled with the living water of Jesus. Yes, what happened to us so many years ago when we became members of the family of Jesus was not intended to be a once-in-a-lifetime event. It was meant to be an event lived every day of our lives as we seek more and more and more to become like the Christ who is our risen Savior. Happy Easter.
Would Hunter Ross Kelly please come, who is to be baptized, please come forward with your sponsor. Lord, have mercy, Lord, have mercy, Christ, have mercy, Christ, have mercy, Lord, have mercy, Lord, have mercy. Holy Mary, Mother of God, Pray for us, Saint Michael. Pray for us, Holy Angels of God. Pray for us, Saint John the Baptist. Pray for us, Saint Joseph. Pray for us, Saint Peter and Saint Paul. Saint Andrew, pray for us. Saint John, pray for us. Saint Mary Magdalene, pray for us. Saint Stephen, pray for us. Saint Ignatius of Antioch, pray for us. Saint Lawrence. Saint Thomas More, pray for us. Saint Perpetua and Saint Felicity, pray for us. Saint Agnes, pray for us. Saint Gregory, pray for us. Saint Augustine, pray for us. Saint Athanasius, pray. Saint Basil, pray for us. Saint Martin, pray for us. Saint Benedict, pray for us. Saint Francis and Saint Dominic, pray for us. Saint Francis Saviour, pray for us. Saint Philip Neri. Saint John Vianney, pray for us. Saint Catherine of Siena, pray for us. Saint Teresa of Jesus, pray for us. All holy men and women, saints of God, pray for us. Lord, be merciful. Lord, deliver us, we pray, from all evil. Lord, deliver us, we pray, from every sin. Lord, deliver us, we pray, from everlasting death. Lord, deliver us, we pray, by our incarnation. Lord, by your death and resurrection, Lord, deliver us, we pray. By the outpouring of the Holy Spirit, Lord, deliver us, we pray. Be merciful to us sinners, Lord, Lord we ask you, hear our prayer. Bring this chosen one to new birth through the grace of baptism. Lord, we ask you, hear our prayer. 
Jesus, Son of the living God, Lord, we ask you hear our prayer. Christ, hear us. Christ, hear us. Christ, graciously hear us. Christ, graciously hear us. Almighty, ever-living God, be present by the mysteries of your great love and send forth the spirit of adoption to create the new peoples brought to birth for you in the font of baptism so that what is to be carried out by our humble service may be brought to fulfillment by your mighty power. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. God, who by invisible power accomplish a wondrous effect through sacramental signs, and who in many ways have prepared water your creation to show forth the grace of baptism. O God, whose spirit in the first moments of the world's creation hovered over the waters, so that the very substance of water would even then take to itself the power to sanctify. O God, who by the outpouring of the flood foreshadowed regeneration, so that from the mystery of the one and the same element of water would come an end to vice and a beginning of virtue. O God, who caused the children of Abraham to pass dry shod through the Red Sea, so that the chosen people set free from slavery to Pharaoh would prefigure the people of the baptized. O God, whose Son, baptized by John in the waters of the Jordan, was anointed with the Holy Spirit, and as he hung upon the cross, gave forth water from his side along with blood, and after his resurrection commanded his disciples, Go forth, teach all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Look now, we pray, upon the face of your church and graciously unseal for her the fountain of baptism. May this water receive by the Holy Spirit the grace of your only begotten Son, so that human nature created in your image and washed clean through the sacrament of baptism from all the squalor of the life of old may be found worthy to rise to the life of newborn children through water and the Holy Spirit. And may the power of the Holy Spirit, O Lord, we pray, come down through your Son into the fullness of this font so that all who have been buried with Christ by baptism into death may rise again to life with him, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Springs of water, bless the Lord. Springs of water. him above all forever. Praise and exalt him above all forever. Hunter, do you renounce Satan and all of his works? and all of his empty show. Do you believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth? Do you believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who, who was born of the Virgin Mary, suffered death and was buried, rose again from the dead, and is seated at the right hand of the Father? 
Do you believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting? Hunter Ross, I baptize you in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. You have put on Christ in him have been baptized. Alleluia, alleluia. You have put on Christ, in him you have been baptized. Alleluia. My dear sisters and brothers, through the Paschal mystery we have been buried with Christ in baptism so that we may walk with him to newness of life. And so now that our Lenten observance is concluded, let us renew the promises of holy baptism by which we once renounce Satan and his works and promise to serve God in the Holy Catholic Church. And so I ask you, all of you, do you renounce Satan? I do. And all of his works? I do. And all of his empty show? I do. Do you really and truly believe in one God, the Father Almighty, the creator of heaven and earth? I do. Do you believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, was buried, and rose from the dead. I do. 
Do you believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body and life everlasting? And may Almighty God, the Father of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, who has given us new birth by water and the Holy Spirit and bestowed on us forgiveness of our sins, keep us by his grace in Christ Jesus our Lord for eternal life.
until you have become a new creation and have clothed yourself in Christ, receive this baptismal garment and bring it unstained to the judgment seat of our Lord Jesus Christ so that you may have everlasting life. Amen. I think my mother said it was that way with me, too. Keith, please come forward to give Hunter the light of Christ. Hunter, you have been enlightened by Christ. Walk always as a child of the light and keep the flame of faith alive in your heart. When the Lord comes, may you go out to meet him with all the saints in the heavenly kingdom. Amen. Amen. Dear Hunter, born again in Christ by baptism, you have become a member of Christ and of his priestly people. Now you are to share in the outpouring of the Holy Spirit among us, the Spirit sent by the Lord upon his apostles at Pentecost and given by them and their successors to the baptized. The promised strength of the Holy Spirit, which you are to receive in confirmation, will make you more like Christ and help you to be a witness to his suffering, death, and resurrection. It will strengthen you to be an active member of the church and to build up the body of Christ in faith and in love. And so, my dear sisters and brothers, I ask you now to join with me as we pray to God our Father that he will pour out the Holy Spirit on Hunter to strengthen him with his gifts and anoint him to be more like Christ, the Son of God. All-powerful God, Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, by water and the Holy Spirit, you freed your Son from sin and gave him new life. Send your Holy Spirit upon him to be his helper and guide. Give him the spirit of wisdom and understanding, the spirit of right judgment and courage, the spirit of knowledge and reverence, Fill him with the spirit of wonder and awe in your presence through Christ our Lord. Amen. Hunter, be sealed with the gift of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Peace be with you. And with your spirit. Congratulations. God bless you. Let's show Hunter our support, please.
please extinguish your candles and as we present our universal prayer to the Lord. Our response this evening is, Lord, hear our prayer. For the church, as we celebrate Easter, that she will be renewed and strengthened in her mission to bring God's saving love and mercy to all people. Let us pray to the Lord. For our nation and its peoples, that our hearts will be strengthened in this Easter season by the power of God's healing love. Let us pray to the Lord. For all of our families, that through our celebration of these Easter mysteries, we will grow in holiness of life, in our fidelity to the church, and in loving service to others. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord hear our prayer. For all the sick and the suffering, the elderly, the poor, and those grieving the death of loved ones, that the victory of the cross of Jesus may fill them with renewed hope and enable them to find meaning in their pain. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord hear our prayer. For the newly baptized, that they may be strengthened in their Easter faith by God's saving grace and the witness of others. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord hear our prayer. For all those who have died, that they will now share in the gift of eternal life with our risen Savior. At this Mass, in a special way, we pray for Stanley and Susan Zubik. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Lord, hear us. Lord, heal us. Lord, help us. Lord, hear our every prayer. Lord, heal our every wound. Lord, help our every need. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen.
Pray, my sisters and brothers in Christ, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Accept, we ask, O Lord, the prayers of your people with the sacrificial offerings that what has begun in the Paschal mystery may by the working of your power bring us to the healing of eternity through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just our duty and our salvation at all times to acclaim you, O Lord, but on this night above all to laud you yet more gloriously when Christ our Passover has been sacrificed. For he is the true Lamb who has taken away the sins of the world by dying he has destroyed our death, and by rising restored our life. Therefore, overcome with paschal joy, every land, every people exalts in your presence forevermore. And even the heavenly powers with the angelic hosts Sing together the unending hymn of your glory as they acclaim. Therefore, most merciful Father, we make humble prayer and petition through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, that you accept and bless these gifts, these offerings, these holy and unblemished sacrifices, which we offer you firstly for your holy Catholic Church. Be pleased to grant her peace, to guard, unite, and govern her throughout the whole world, together with your servant Francis, our Pope, and me, your most unworthy servant, with my brothers William, William and Mark, and all those who, holding to the truth, hand on the Catholic and apostolic faith. Remember, Lord, your servants and all gathered here whose faith and devotion are known to you. For them we offer you this sacrifice of praise, for they offer it for themselves and all who are dear to them for the redemption of their souls in hope of health and well-being, and paying their homage to you, the eternal God, living and true. Celebrating the most sacred night of the resurrection of our Lord Jesus Christ in the flesh, and in communion with those whose memory we venerate, especially the glorious ever-Virgin Mary, Mother of our God and Lord Jesus Christ, and blessed Joseph, her spouse, your blessed apostles and martyrs, Peter and Paul, Andrew, James, John, Thomas, 
James, Philip, Bartholomew, Matthew, Simon and Jude, Linus, Kleenitz, Clement, Sixtus, Cornelius, Cyprian, Lawrence, Chrysogonus, John and Paul, Cosmas and Damian, and all your saints, we ask that through their merits and prayers in all things, we may be defended by your protecting help. Therefore, Lord, we pray, graciously accept this oblation of our service, that of your whole family, which we make to you also, for those to whom you have been pleased to give the new birth of water and the Holy Spirit, granting them forgiveness of all their sins, Order our days in your peace and command that we be delivered from eternal damnation and counted among the flock of those whom you have chosen. Be pleased, O God, we pray, to bless, acknowledge, and approve this offering in every respect. Make it spiritual and acceptable so that it may become for us the body and blood of your most beloved Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. On the day before he was to suffer, he took bread in his holy and venerable hands and with eyes raised to heaven to you, his almighty Father, giving you thanks. He said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took this precious chalice in his holy and venerable hands, and once more giving you thanks, he said the blessing and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the blessed passion, the resurrection from the dead, and the glorious ascension into heaven of Christ, your Son, our Lord, we, your servants and your holy people, offer to your glorious majesty from the gifts that you have given us, this pure victim, this holy victim, this spotless victim, the holy bread of eternal life, and the chalice of everlasting salvation. Be pleased to look upon these offerings with a serene and kindly countenance and to accept them as once you were pleased to accept the gifts of your servant Abel the just, the sacrifice of Abraham our father in faith, and the offering of your high priest Melchizedek, a holy sacrifice, a spotless victim. In humble prayer we ask you, almighty God, command that these gifts be borne by the hands of your holy angel to your altar on high in the sight of your divine majesty, so that all of us who through this participation at the altar receive the most holy body and blood of your Son may be filled with every grace and heavenly blessing. Remember also, Lord, your servants who have gone before us with the sign of faith and rest in the sleep of peace. Grant them, O Lord, we pray, and all who sleep in Christ, a place of refreshment, light, and peace. To us also, your servants, 
who, though sinners, hope in your abundant mercies, graciously grant some share in fellowship with your holy apostles and martyrs, with John the Baptist, Stephen, Matthias, Barnabas, Ignatius, Alexander, Marcellinus, Peter, Felicity, Perpetua, Agatha, Lucy, Agnes, Cecilia, Anastasia, and all your saints. Admit us, we beseech you, into their company, not weighing our merits, but granting us your pardon through Christ our Lord. Through whom you continue to make all these good things, O Lord. You sanctify them, fill them with life, bless them, and bestow them upon us. Through him and with him and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. May the peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. And let us turn and offer to one another a sign of the peace of Christ.
Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter into my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed.
let us pray. Pour out on us, O Lord, the spirit of your love, and in your kindness make those you have nourished by this Paschal sacrament one in mind and heart, through Christ our Lord. Amen. Well, as we bring this uh, great vigil ceremony to a close, certainly together with Father Stubnay and all of my brothers uh, and sisters in the sanctuary, I want to wish you a very blessed Easter. You know, in very many ways, we have to thank everybody who's made this such a grace-filled week here at all of our services at the cathedral. In a very special way, uh, thanks to Dr. Brian Gurley uh, and to Ken Danchik uh, and the cathedral choir for your great job, as well as for Linda Ortenzo and Nate Sudi for helping us to really pray well with beautiful music. Let's show them our appreciation. Thanks in a special way for the greeters who welcomed us as we've come to the cathedral this week, for the ushers who have helped and call us to stewardship. Thanks to the seminarians who've done such a beautiful job uh, with serving in our ceremonies. Thanks to my brother priest, uh, to Deacon Tom. In a very special way to you, uh, Father Chris, for the way in which you uh, lead this cathedral parish and have really called people together in, in ways to make everybody who comes here feel so welcome. In a very particular way, I want to say a special word of thanks to Erica Gamero and Deacon Kevin Lander, uh, our um, MCs for these ceremonies. They have worked so hard behind the scenes mm -hmm. to make sure that everything fit together and fit together beautifully. And so let's show them all our appreciation. And finally, to our non-seminarian servers, they also did a terrific job as well, too. And so, Hunter, once again, what a thrill it has been to be a part of your ceremony today. And as you go forth, know that you go forth with my prayers and prayers of lots and lots of other people. Mm -hmm. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Bow down for the blessing. May Almighty God bless you through today's Easter solemnity and in his compassion defend you from every assault of sin. Amen. May he who restores you to eternal life in the resurrection of his only begotten Son endow you with the prize of immortality. Amen. Now that the days of the Lord's passion have drawn to a close, may you who celebrate the gladness of the Paschal Feast come with Christ's help and exalting in spirit to those feasts that are celebrated in eternal joy. Amen. And may the blessing of Almighty God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit come upon you and remain with you forever. Amen. The Mass is ended. Go in peace. Alleluia. Alleluia. Thanks be to God. Alleluia. Alleluia. Saint Michael the Archangel, defend us in battle. Be our protection against the wickedness and snares of the devil. May God rebuke him, we humbly pray. And do thou, O Prince of the Heavenly Host, by the power of God, cast into hell Satan and all the evil spirits prowling about the world, seeking the ruin of souls. Amen.
Sky is 